But Zubin, it pains me to say this right now, but you know the Eagles are the worst team in the NFC. Right now, they're the worst team in the conference. They're minus 28 in point differential. Uh, and Doug Peterson is only one of four coaches to make the playoffs in three straight years going into this year. So they have to figure out what is the problem, and the problem starts absolutely with Carson Wentz. And, you know, you look at him, his footwork is way off. His throws are way off. As, 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 uh, as, as been pointed out by ESPN Stats and Information, which I think is a very telling number. And, it, and, and when you look at it in the eye test and you just watch film, he's got 20 off-target throws, most in the NFL. 15, 15 of those 20 off-target throws are in a clean pocket, not under pressure, not under duress. So there's a lot there's a lot to unpack there with his mechanics and with his accuracy and then his decision making, right? I mean I mean Key, the thing I learned most from Bill Parcells about the quarterback position and I, I sat in his office for many, many times was that the job of the quarterback is to do two things. Get the team in the end zone and win the football game. That's it. Those two things. And he throws that interception on first and 10 in the third quarter when he marches downfield. And that throw was late. That throw was in double team. His J.J. Arcega white side was being double covered. And that was a poor decision. And here's the thing, you know, a lot because I'm not allowed in the locker room this year. I rely a lot on what I see on the field pre and post snap. What's the dynamics going on? And it's important to really watch carefully. And when Carson Wentz came off the field, no one talked to him. When he came to the bench, hmm. there was no patting him on the helmet. Uh, Yo, dog, we're going to get you next time. Don't worry about it. We got you back. So don't, there was none of that. There was no chatter. There was no conversation. There was no interaction with him until he went to one of the coaches and got the tablet to look at the play. And that was very telling to me. You know what that means, Sal? That means that they're getting and growing tired with Carson Wentz at the quarterback spot. And with that being said, the offensive line obviously hasn't played up to snuff. They've been somewhat decimated with injuries and moving guys around on the offensive line. And because of that, how soon, how likely – or are we to see a young quarterback that they drafted in the second round in Jalen Hurts? I don't know the answer to that. Um, I know they activated him last week. They used him as a decoy in a couple of plays, and both of them were pretty successful. Um, but when they drafted him, they drafted him with the intention of using him on the field. Uh, you know, obviously it was a different training camp. It was a truncated training camp. He couldn't have any kind of preseason game, so that made it much more difficult to incorporate any kind of you know, crazy new idea to your offense, such as bringing Taysom Hill-like player and Jalen Hurts and put him on the field, a la what Drew Brees and Sean Payton do in New Orleans Saints. But you're asking me, behind center, taking the snaps, hey, hey Key, that's an enormous, an enormous admission of a mistake that you made, right? You just gave this guy $100 million plus you anointed him the franchise quarterback. A year later, you're telling your team, you're telling your organization, you're telling your fan base, you're telling the whole world, oops, we made a big mistake here. But, you know, here's let me give you another part of the answer, and that is this. I was there, I covered the Eagles game in 2008 in Baltimore when Andy Reid took his Pro Bowl quarterback off the field after he threw an interception. I'm talking about Don Mc, Donovan McNabb. He mm-hmm. benched Donovan McNabb. Remember that? Yep. I was going to get Remember to that, that, but you got there for me. Right. right. So he benched Donovan McNabb. So, uh, listen, and that's Donovan McNabb we're talking about now. And they had also given him $100 million. And we're talking about a guy that Andy Reid drafted, just like Carson Wentz was drafted by Doug Peterson. So, uh, you know, there's nothing really prote- – there, there shouldn't be anything that protects Carson Wentz from getting benched. If Donovan may have been asking for benched by Andy Reid, then Carson Wentz certainly can get benched or should be able to get benched by, by Doug Peterson. There's no question about that. So, Sal, what do you think a reasonable timetable would be if Wentz continues to play with this type of 
lack of zest, right? They play the Bengals coming up next, then at 49ers, at Steelers, then versus the Ravens. Mm. Well, if you lose to the Bengals at home, uh, even though there'll be no fans in the stands, uh, you'll be able to hear the boos in South Philadelphia coming out of the row homes. I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Now, you know, since 2018, Jay Will, the Eagles are 15 and 14 in Carson Wentz's starts. They are a five, basically a 500 team. They're basically a 500 team. And after he threw that interception, next day, what did Doug Peterson say yesterday about the interception? Unacceptable. Yep. Now, after your coach or your boss says your behavior or your performance is unacceptable, the next step is you're fired, you're benched. There, there is, you know, you don't pass go and collect 200 after that. Mm. Monopoly reference there by Sal Palantonio. <laughs> <laughs> wanted, to, <laughs> wanted to quickly mention, um, right now they're 0-2. Um, do you think they can rally and make the playoffs? I know it's early, but do you kind of feel like the odds aren't favorable to 0-2 teams making the playoffs, but do you sort of feel like this team has enough moxie to rally? Do they have enough talent is the question. Moxie and, and will is one thing. It's hard to measure that. Hard to measure that when you're not in the locker room. I'll be honest with you. Reporting in the NFL this year is tougher because we're not in the locker room day to day. We're not looking at the players in the eye, talking to them one-on-one, reading their body language after the game, uh, talking to them after the cameras leave. I mean, you know, Keith Keith seeing me in the locker room. I wait till the cameras go. I put my notebook away. I'll sit down uh, next to them and, and, and they'll say, what's up? Can't do that this year. Hard to find out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.